this is a series where I talk to different industry professions about sustainability. And today I will be having a conversation with Anish Kadyan, Senior Executive of Property Management at South Asia. So Anish, Hello. would you like to share what your journey has been like with sustainability in your field of property management? Well, sustainability, it's something which everybody needs to really uh, think about, but most people don't think about. And uh, India, unfortunately, has been a bit behind the sustainability uh, initiatives, I would say. But now uh, things are catching up. But if you specifically see from the real estate and building services side, uh, there's a lot of focus on sustainability all across. Uh, the new buildings are coming up. Uh, most of them come up with either some uh, green certification, be it LEED or US IGBC or GRIHA. So there is a lot of awareness about sustainability in the building and real estate services sector, which is a good thing, but a lot a long way to go, I would say. Hmm. Okay. So like, let's start with that. What exactly does sustainability mean to you? So personally, sustainability means to me uh, is having the minimal impact on the environment in whatever we do. So be it uh, the building that we create, the operations of the buildings, uh, the operations of business, how um, they can uh, leave a minimal footprint on the environment around us. So be it on, uh, in terms of the pollution that the vehicles cause for all the uh, employees going to work, uh, the energy that is used, so the carbon footprint that is being generated, uh, the water that is being used, the waste that we uh, generate, all these things come uh, are a part of sustainability. But in a nutshell, I would say how how are we impacting our environment? Uh, that, that's what I would say is, is uh, sustainability. Hmm. Okay. And what are the different ways that like uh, buildings impact the environment, be it residential, office, or malls? So buildings, uh, as you may be aware also, uh, consume uh, uh, a large amount of energy that is generated in any country. In, in advanced countries, it can be over 50% of the energy that is consumed in, in developing markets like ours, maybe 30, 40% of the energy is consumed in the building sector itself. So building sector means a lot, residential, commercial, retail, hospitals, schools. There's a huge amount of energy that is consumed. And uh, energy is of course, the most important uh, thing in sustainability. So buildings contribute a lot. So if you don't use your building efficiently, uh, you'll be, you'll be uh, using energy in an inefficient way and of course adding to the, the uh, carbon uh, increase in the environment. But yeah. in addition to that, uh, there's so many other ways. So for example, the water that is used in a building, mm. uh, the uh, waste that is generated in a building, is it going to a landfill? Is it uh, being uh, segregated? So waste again is a big component in sustainability. Uh, in addition to that, uh, of course, for example, uh, employee transportation. You see so many in India, the, the IT capital of uh, the world. So every day, um, uh, thousands and lakhs of people are going from their home to the workplace. So are they doing it in a sustainable manner? Uh, that also impacts, uh, it's because of the building that we are in. So this is some of the ways that uh, buildings contribute to uh, impacting the environment around us. Yeah. Okay, so like we can talk about each of these. So if we're mm -hmm. starting with energy, then how do you make sure that a building can reduce its energy consumption or use energy more efficiently? Uh, well, there are many ways. Uh, but the first starting point, of course, is, and I'm talking about the buildings which are operational. I'm not going into the design aspects or uh, up ground up construction because that's another whole topic in itself. But if you have a building, uh, uh, there's a Bureau of Energy Efficiency guideline about uh, the star ratings of buildings. So how much of energy per energy are they consuming per, uh, you know, it's an index called EPI, Energy Performance Index. So that's a very good way to measure where your building is as per what uh, one maybe, you know, you take any benchmark. So the Bureau of Energy Efficiency is one benchmark. Okay. So uh, if you compare your building with that, see where you are, and then you can bring down your energy to those benchmarks then yes, because you cannot just switch off everything in a building. That's not going to work. So uh, this is a good way to see where your building is and then uh, bring, bring the consumption down. Now bringing the consumption down, the many ways your air conditioning systems are the biggest consumers of energy, about 50 to 60% of the energy is used there. 
uh, how can you optimize that? How can you make that more efficient? A lot of, uh, you can use renewable energies, uh, for example, rooftop solar. In some states, you can buy power from the great green power. So many ways which you can bring the energy down or the energy footprint of a building down through these initiatives. Hmm. So it's like solar power becoming big in Mumbai, would you say? Or like other, uh, like Bangalore? Solar uh, has a lot of uh, potential. Hmm. Uh, uh, but the problem is, of course, you need size and scale. Yeah. So, uh, yes, in a building, you can have a, amount, a li limited amount of solar energy can be used, but most of the solar energy will come in from solar farms and then they will provide to the grid and then the buildings will buy from the grid. Yeah. But yes, it is getting more, uh, more and more developers are putting rooftop solars on, on, on the buildings, especially in large developments. You see a lot of large IT campuses and even in residential uh, developments, you, you are now finding uh, rooftop solars which are contributing to some percentage of the energy which is being used in the building, yeah. but uh, not as much as say maybe in the Western uh, more developed countries. In Europe, the use of solar is much higher than in India. Yeah. But uh, I think India is catching up uh, through the National Solar Mission and all. So we will see more of solar use as we go by. Okay. Uh, and then like moving on from energy, uh, you also talked about like waste disposal. So what can you yeah. do to make that more sustainable? Uh, waste, I think the first thing is to uh, reduce, you know, there are three R's, reduce, yeah. recycle, and, and uh, reuse. So, uh, but before all that is awareness. Mm. Um, still a lot of us generate a lot of waste. We're not even sure uh, where that waste is going. So if you're able to first make people aware that this waste can be impactful and it will harm the environment, uh, then uh, you automatically uh, reduce or minimize the impact on the environment. Uh, in buildings, especially, see, at home, there's a different, uh, I would say, way to manage waste. But in buildings, uh, electronic waste is also generated. Uh, for example, batteries or uh, LED bulbs and the tube lights. So they have to be disposed of uh, in, a, in a correct manner. That's very important. Uh, building waste segregation, again, is, is important. And then the waste, where is it going? There are authorized agencies, but a lot of buildings, they don't use those agencies. It is sent to uh, directly to, to one central landfill. So some ways that it can be in residential societies, for example, in large condominiums, uh, there's a lot of effort being done these days to uh, collect waste, segregate it, and maybe have composting plants within the yeah. building itself. So that is a big, big uh, change that we are seeing in the last two to three years, where uh, building owners are taking responsibility for the waste that they generate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and also, like this is a bit specific, but like it's been raining a lot in Mumbai these days. So okay. have, do any buildings do like rainwater harvesting by any chance? Oh, yes, yes. It's a, actually a mandate. Any new building which is uh, uh, built mm -hmm. has to have rainwater harvesting. That's a, I would say, a, it's, a, it's a mandate. Mm -hmm. uh, there are laws around it, codes around it in terms of how much of rainwater harvesting uh, pit what are the size and then uh, is required so rainwater water harvesting actually really helps uh, a building cut down on the water cost mumbai for example may not have so much of difficulty in terms of water uh, still there is a water is available but in cities where water is not easily available rainwater harvesting can bring down the water cost quite a bit and uh, for two to three months actually you can uh, uh, use the water which is uh, harvested uh, to run your building operations so yeah, I, I think rainwater harvesting is standard these days, but uh, can more be done about it? Yes, uh, the kind of rainwater harvesting pits which are made, uh, can they be made better? Uh, can they, Sometimes the maintenance of these pits is not done well. So that's an area which needs maybe some focus to uh, make these rainwater harvesting pits more effective. Mm. Okay. Um, and also moving on from that, like, there's something known as the lead and the well ratings, right? So like yeah. how, how are those like valuable to owners and for what reasons? So uh, lead, uh, of course, has been around for a very long time. Uh, it's a US uh, based certification system. And in India, we have our own uh, two or three systems, which are uh, the Griha rating, which is the uh, by uh, Terry. And then we have uh, uh, IGBC green rating system, which is the Indian Green Building Council. So all these rating systems are basically that when you design a building, you design it efficiently. 
uh, keeping the environment in mind, keeping the uh, energy uh, use, keeping the construction activities also, all these things come into uh, the certification. So uh, now I think any good building which comes up, the developer will go in for these certifications. That's how uh, aware people are now. And even the people who move into the buildings who typically want to move into a green building. Mm. So to say it's not uh, necessary, but they prefer to move into a green building because the building is more energy efficient, uh, is more sustainable. Uh, it has been built in a sustainable manner. So a lot of large corporates uh, want to align themselves on sustainability goals. So that's uh, how, how they do that. One of the reasons, uh, one of the ways they do it. Uh, well is a more recent, um, uh, I would say, certification system that a lot of organizations are taking now. Uh, well actually focuses, while uh, LEED uh, focuses more on uh, the energy and sustainability part, well focuses on the whole uh, building as well as the uh, human aspect of uh, uh, the building. So it includes uh, transportation, it, it includes uh, the mental health of uh, the people, it includes indoor air quality, the many aspects of uh, how an occupant feels inside a building are covered under this. And uh, that again is gaining a lot of traction because now wellness is, is so-called the in thing, um, not only because of the COVID the situation, but even before that. So about five, six years back, well, well is now really picked up in the market and uh, buildings are now going for well certification so that the employees uh, feel that they're in a healthy uh, workplace, which of course leads to more productive uh, employees and, and uh, more engaged employees. That's interesting. Um, so like now, if we're to compare like India with maybe like other developed countries, so mm -hmm. where is India in terms of that, like sustainability and what can we do? What can we learn from other countries? Uh, like I mentioned, uh, the sustainability movement in India started a bit late, uh, yeah. of course, because uh, we, we started developing uh, and, and having the large grade A assets uh, much later. And even now, if you see the, the, the footprint, the, the uh, amount of real estate, grade A real estate we have in India it is uh, not as much as there, it is there in the West. But uh, over the last 10 to 15 years, there's been a uh, I would say sustained sustainability movement all across India. Uh, thanks to the Indian Green Building Council as well, and it, even the other uh, certification, uh, the bodies which drive these certifications, more awareness uh, from the building owners, as well as the people who want to move into buildings. Mm. So as of now, uh, India is, I think, the third largest, I'm not really sure, but I think it is the, it has the third largest registered uh, green certified projects. So in a span of 10 to 15 years, although we were late, we have actually really caught up with the large uh, developing economies like US and China. Yeah. So uh, we are actually on par now, I would say. And some of the practices that we have, see traditionally Indian uh, developments were green. So yeah. if you see the way the, the old forts and the homes were built, the large ceilings, uh, all, all those things were all sustainable developments. Yeah. So India, the, the, a lot of architects in India are world known in terms of the sustainable developments. Uh, the concept of net zero buildings you may have heard uh, that's gained traction in india there are now quite a number of net zero uh, i won't say very large scale buildings but uh, there are homes and, and uh, some smaller developments which are actually net zero that means they don't consume any energy they develop, uh, produce their own energy yeah so i would say that at this point in time india is well placed on the sustainability uh, i'll say roadmap yeah. uh, we have a lot of uh, depth and experience now yeah. and I uh, on par with the, the global uh, sustainability movements. Hmm. So finally, like what does the future look like? Uh, future is green, <laughs> I'd say, uh, because uh, the amount of awareness that has been generated uh, and uh, the, the demand from people is, is also uh, very high now. Uh, if you see any of the residential condominiums, which are uh, the, all the high rises which are being made, people are making their own homes even if just a standalone home they want a green and sustainable home so uh, thanks to the uh, awareness that has been generated yeah uh, about sustainability but more uh, so i would say the awareness about uh, the greenhouse gas effect 
the two degrees rise in temperature you see a lot of movies uh, bollywood as well as uh, not bollywood, hollywood movies talking about it so uh, people are now aware that if we don't do something now uh, we will be putting our next generation and uh, the, the whole earth uh, into into a bit of a tight spot yeah so thanks to that uh, there is more focus and more awareness about sustainability so i'm sure we are on the right track but there's not enough we can do uh, there are uh, the, the many many more things we as in the real estate community can do Uh, every day we can make our buildings more efficient our operations more efficient to minimize the impact that we create because there is a big impact that buildings have so yeah. there's never enough we can do yeah okay this is all very like interesting and enlightening i think having this new perspective on sustainability was great so thank you for right. being here thank you all right thank you so much